So you've checked out Spatial Chat and you're ready to get started with your own space. This video is going to dive into making your own space as well as customizing it to address all of the needs that you have for your event. So to get started, go ahead and go to the spatial.chat website. And once there, click on the button, try for free. Now, I may have tried this earlier, so I've already entered in my email address, kirsten at fun.co. The space name is what participants are going to see when they log in, and this can be changed later. But I'm just gonna put in spatial chat admin video. Now the space URL, this is unique across all the spatial chats that have ever been created. So you might get some errors if you've already created a site that's been taken. So for example, if I do test, it's gonna come back with an error saying it needs to be at least five characters long. If I do testing, well, someone's already been testing, so it's already been taken. So I'm gonna do spatial chat is cool, is cool too, because I may have made one earlier and messed up this video, and so we're gonna try this again. So this is a unique URL, and this is what participants are going to use in order to access the space. So once I'm ready, I'm gonna click create space. It's gonna send an email to the email address that I provided. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to my inbox. And nearly instantly, Spatial Chat has already sent me an email. And in this email is a lot of background information, but very specifically, it has two links. One of these links, the first one, is the one that you would like to share with participants. You wanna send them this link so that they can access your space. The second link is your super top secret admin link. You do not wanna share this with anyone. Anyone who logs in with this link is gonna be able to completely change your spatial chat and it might mess up the work that you've put into it. So do not forward this email to others. Instead, create a new message that has just the participant link for them. So let's go ahead and click on this admin link. So here we are in spatial chat and here is the profile login screen. I've logged in before, but you can change your avatar by clicking on the little avatar icon and choosing a photo. You can change your name. And then I personally put some information in the about me box, but you don't have to, that part's optional. And I'll go ahead and click on continue. Now this next screen is going to look at your device settings and make sure that your webcam and your microphone are ready and working. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my camera, hey, and my microphone just to make sure everything's working. If you have multiple microphones and webcams, you can also choose those on the right hand side. You can also make sure your microphone's working by watching this green bar move up and down as you speak. And once you're ready, go ahead and click on join space. And welcome to the space you made. So here we are using your admin link and it's really not that different from the participant side of things. What you're seeing, pretty similar to what your participants see. But there are a couple new menus and that's what we'll explore in this video. But before we get started, let's clear up some terminology. So you are in a space right now, but inside of a space, you might have multiple rooms. Right now, I'm sitting in the welcome room. There's also a networking and poster session, as well as a stage and audio room that have different settings and different looks and feel. We're currently in a breakout room, which is where you can click and move your avatar, move closer and further away from other people and chat with them. So let's go ahead and explore the menu to see what we can find here. So the first thing that you'll see is just a quick blurb about yourself and your role. You can also edit your profile if you weren't happy with what you set in the first place. The next thing there is is plans and billing and when you click on this, it's gonna open a new tab in your web browser. Here you'll learn about different information about the spatial chat plans that might better suit your needs. And you can also find the counter for how many participant minutes you have left. Participant minutes are simply just the number of minutes that your collective participants have used. So this is a great way to count down to them to make sure that you don't get kicked out of your space before you're done. So let's hop back over to our space. Hey again. So in our menu, 
We've done profile and plans and billing. Now let's go to space settings. Again, these are gonna be settings for the entire space. This applies to all of the rooms. So you can rename or change the URL if you weren't happy with those the first time around. On some of the spatial chat plans, you are able to upload a logo. So I'll upload a logo that I have on my desktop and I'm actually gonna add a URL. By adding a URL, this allows participants to click on the logo and get redirected to a website of your choice. You can change the theme color. I'm feeling a little bit teal today. Remember earlier when you were editing your profile and I said, ah, I'll put this in on my about me, but I don't have to. You can make your participants enter in information in that about me field. So you can toggle this on and off to make that required. If you do make it required, here's what it's gonna look like from the participant side of things. You can also set a space start time. So by setting a start time, what you're doing is preventing individuals, not admins, but other individuals from logging in before that start time. I'm gonna make mine in 2030 so that no one is gonna visit this anytime soon. When you set a start time, participants can still go to the URL you send them, but they're gonna see a message that looks something like this. I'll go ahead and leave these settings on and click OK. Your next menu item is a space password. As the name suggests, you can set a password for your space. If you choose to set a password, this is what it's gonna look like on the participant side of things. As a tip, if you're gonna set a password, I would highly encourage you to share that password with those that you want to be in your spatial chat space. Do not forget to tell them how to access your space. I'm not gonna do that though. Anyone can come join this space. And then finally, your last option here is room permissions. Now remember, there's multiple rooms. There's other ways to get through these permissions and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but by clicking on room permissions, you can instantly go between all the different rooms you have and very quickly change the different permissions that you have set for those. But again, we'll explore that more in a little bit. There is one more option here in the menu item and that's leaving space, but we're just getting started. So why would you wanna leave? So there you go, you have now mastered the menu item. Remember the menu item is mostly thinking about your entire space. Next up, we're gonna explore a little bit more about these different rooms and how you can customize these rooms to be exactly what you want them to be. Now that you've mastered how to set the settings for your entire space, let's look more into the different types of rooms. We're currently in a breakout room. This is where you have an avatar like you see here, you can move your avatar around, you can move the background around, and you can move closer and further away from people to join in on their conversations. Now, when looking at a breakout room, your customization icons for it are over here on the left-hand side. So if you don't see this on the left, you might need to actually click the customize button. So that customize button toggles on and off this toolbar. So the first icon in this toolbar is the setting a spawn spot. So what this means is that when individuals enter this room, this is where they're going to start. Now you might wanna do this because you have specific information right on this area that you want people to see before they start doing other things. With this spawn spot, you can click on it and then you can drag it around your space. You can delete it if you're like, actually they can just show up wherever. And this is also only visible, this icon is only visible to the admins. The participants don't actually see the spawn spot, they just show up in it. I'm okay for participants to go wherever they want to, so I'm just gonna not include it in this breakout room. But maybe in another breakout room, I might wanna use that. The next thing you can do is change the background. So by clicking on this icon, I actually have a lot of options. I can choose one of the backgrounds that Spatial Chat has created. So this is a nice, cozy fireplace. 
This looks really nice for my participants for maybe a nice dinner party I'm hosting. Ah, so warm. <laughs> the other things that you can do is you can upload an image. So maybe you created something very specific to the type of event you're hosting. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a background. I'm gonna do a town hall meeting where I'm gonna have multiple small groups that I want people to join. Now the best resolution, if you're going to do your own background like you see here, is 3200 by 1800 pixels. If you forget that, which is very possible that you might, this is also posted in the upload. So it says the best size is 3200 by 1800. If you do other sizes, that is totally okay. You just might see a decline in the resolution within your space. Finally, you can also link to an image. So if you find a really cool image on the internet and you wanna use that as your background, you can just directly link to it. So in another tab, I have Google Images open and I'm just gonna search spatial chat. And I'm gonna look for an image that I really like. Um, so let's do uh, this image. It looks like they're watching a concert, which looks pretty freaking cool. I'm just gonna check out the website real quick. Oh. Spatial Chat's gotten five out of five stars. That's awesome. So here's my image that I wanna use. I'm gonna right click on this image and do copy image address. I essentially want the URL for that image. I'm gonna go back into Spatial Chat. I'm gonna paste that URL. It'll show me a little preview of the image to make sure that is what I want. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on okay. And so here I am in this concert with all of these other people within Spatial Chat. But honestly, I kind of like the coziness of this fireplace. Um, so I'm just gonna go back to the fireplace one. And we'll chill here by the fire. So we've got the spawn spot, we've done the background. Now you can also change some background settings. So the scrolled background currently when I click, it drags the background to different parts of the background. But if you undo scrolled background, you see the background stays still, and then you can kind of still move around the space. This setting's a little confusing, so I would recommend just keep it on as a scrolled background. If it's getting later at night and you're trying to set the mood, you can change the brightness. And you can also change when participants come into a room, how zoomed in or zoomed out they are. They can change that, but this is just what's default when they first come into the space. So that's it for your background settings. Now, as a reminder, this is per room. These settings are for just this breakout room, the welcome room. If I were to go into the networking room, it would have completely different settings. If you are like, you know what? I hate everything that I've done. You can also just restore everything to default and it'll go back to how it originally was. So here's our original background that was already in this space. And then when you're finished, you can click done and it's just gonna hide that toolbar. Again, if I go to the networking room, this happens to have the same background. I'm gonna change it to something else real quick. If I go back to the welcome room, it still has my same settings for the welcome room. So these options are completely unique. The other thing you can do to make a particular breakout room unique is by pinning images, YouTube videos, uh, GIFs, stickers into the space. Now everyone, including your participants, have access to this option. In your bottom toolbar, if you click on the plus sign, this is to add different types of media. So for example, you could add an image and the image I'm gonna choose <laughs> Sure, we'll choose my profile picture um, because that's what I currently have linked. So what I can do is the image uploads, I can click and drag it, I can resize it. Now, if I leave this room, let's say I go to the networking room, I get a message that says, hey, you have some shared elements, but you haven't pinned them. They're not stuck to the space. Do you want to lock them? Like, do you want to pin them? I have two options. I can say lock, be like, yes, please keep it there. Please let it stay pinned there. Or I can do delete. So when I move to the other room, my picture is no longer there anymore. So I'm just gonna click delete and go to the networking room. 
I'm going to come back to welcome and that picture is gone. But what I could do, and I'll use a GIF this time just to show you some of these different options you can see. So we can have lots of different options. We're going to do a very um, shiny earth. And so here, if I try to leave again, I'm going to say, you know what, actually lock it. So that when I come back to welcome, here it is. Here is my earth. I also can manually pin it by clicking on the image and you notice it already pinned it for me because I told it to pin it when I left. If I undo it, it's gonna delete. If I click it, it's gonna stay there even if I'm in a completely different area. So if there's certain things you want already pinned or already in your space, this is the way to do it. Now, by default, your participants can do this too. But when we talk about room permissions in a little bit, you can take that off if you don't want them sharing things or if you don't want them permanently pinning them to your space. I do want to show you one more type of media with a video. Because with our GIFs and with our images, they're still, there's no sound. Video is obviously a little bit different. So when you add a video, you can't upload from your computer, but you could link to, say, a YouTube video. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go to YouTube, and I specifically want lo-fi hip hop. This is really good jam to listen to, really great background music. So there's currently an ad. That doesn't matter. What you can't see is I just copied the URL for the video, and I'm going to paste it here into Spatial Chat. Similar to images and GIFs, you can resize the video, you can move the video. So I'm going to just keep it right next to me for now. You still have that pin and delete option, but there's also settings you can change. So I clicked on settings. You can sync the video so that when I click play, everyone sees the video and it all starts at the same time. By undoing that, this means individuals can click on the video independently of one another and each watch it separately at different times. If it's a video that you want everyone to be watching, you can turn on sound for the entire room. Otherwise, it's only going to be participants that are right next to that video that can hear that video. If you do room-wide sound, you may want to kind of start it out a little bit lower than usual so that users are not assaulted by your volume when they first enter in a room. But I'm going to keep it so that people just need to be right next to it to listen to it if they need a little chill. Again, it's a pinnable item. If you don't pin it, it will be lost if you move to another room. So now you have all the information for breakout rooms specifically. So now that you've mastered how to customize a breakout room, let's talk about adding a room. Now you can add lots of different types of rooms by clicking on the add room button that's at the bottom of the room list. Here you could add a breakout room, a stage room, or an audio room. We'll talk about the bottom two in a little bit, but let's just make a new breakout room. You can give this breakout room a name, such as the cafeteria. I don't know why you'd name it a cafeteria. You're probably not eating um, in this location, but I did not think this all the way through. And let's go ahead and teleport to the cafeteria. Now remember, your decorations, your media, your backgrounds are unique to each room. So you could customize those again in this space. When you're in a room, and even if you're not in a room, if you highlight over the room names in the room list, you'll notice that a little pencil icon opens up. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, and you can see you have a lot of different options for that room. If you are unhappy with the room name that you came up with, which I am, <laughs> uh, you can rename it. So maybe a student lounge where all the students hang out is more appropriate for spatial chat. You can also change the position of the room. So if you want it higher or lower on your list of rooms, you can change that. You can also duplicate a room. So let's say you've changed backgrounds, you've changed permissions, you've changed media, you've changed a lot of things, and you're like, actually, I want every room to look like that. Duplicating the room can come in handy. So I can duplicate this room, and it's going to keep everything the same. 
You can still change it, but the goal is to save yourself by some work by duplicating the features you want. Now, I don't actually want another student lounge, so I could just rename it, or by clicking on that pencil, I'm actually just gonna remove that room, and I'm really sure I want to, so I'm gonna click remove. Some other options you have are room permissions. When you click on room permissions, just move myself out of the way there. When you click on room positions, this is very specific to the room you're in. We are currently in the student lounge. So this is the permissions for just the student lounge. You would have to do this individually for the different rooms if you wanna change it. So by default, participants can do everything. But if you don't want them to do everything, you might wanna to toggle some of these off. Maybe you don't want them sharing images or pinning some of those shared elements. Maybe you don't want them using the chat or their camera or their microphone or their megaphone. Now this is for participants only. Admins like yourself and hosts, which you can promote, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, kind of supersede these restrictions and they will be able to do all of those things. Going back to our editing options, you can set a room password. So I'm gonna do a super high secret password of password to lock the room. So when a participant may try to join it, they're gonna be prompted to enter in a password. Another thing that you can do is you can hide a room. Now, hiding a room enables you to at least set up the room to how you want it to look, but no one else can see it. Admins can see it, hosts can see it, participants don't see anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide this room. I'm still in it, I'm an admin, I can do whatever I want. You can see this kind of hidden icon, but again, participants don't even see that, they just see nothing. Whenever I'm ready to open this room, I can just toggle it by clicking that icon, or I can go back to the options and click show room. Now, all those things I showed you is true for audio rooms and stage rooms as well. It's just what you can do in those rooms is a little bit different but this enables you to change your different room types. Now, if you're running into the fact that you can't add more rooms, that button might be grayed out. It could just be that the spatial chat plan you're on has a limitation on how many rooms you can have. By default, you're able to have at least three with a free account, but again, that might change depending on which plan that you're using. Now that we've kind of mastered how to make rooms and how to arrange those rooms, let's talk about the final two types of rooms. We have a stage room and an audio room. Let's go ahead and create a stage room. So I'm gonna click on stage room. I'm gonna name it stage room, very original. I'm gonna okay it, and then let's go ahead and teleport into it. So you'll notice that when I came into it, you no longer see my avatar. A stage room is if you think about people being on a stage, that's kind of what this is. Up to six people can be on the stage and everyone that's in this room will see those six people. Let me show you how this looks real quick and then we'll talk about how you customize this space. So if you are in an admin or a host, you're gonna have this option to go on stage. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Make sure that I look beautiful and that I'm ready to go and I'm gonna click on go on stage. And so this is what it looks like when someone is on stage. This screen might be split up six different ways for six different individuals. Now, while there can be six people on the stage, only one of them can actually share. So if you wanted to share your screen, only one person on stage can actually share. I'm gonna go ahead and leave stage because I feel like having my face really large is kind of distracting. So I'm gonna leave stage. And so now we kind of have this blank background. Now, while no one's on the stage, you might be like, well, let's make this look a little bit more exciting. So similar to breakout rooms, there is a change background option where you can choose from the gallery, you can upload your own or link to an image, but you also have this stage title and description. So here, this might be the main act. This is the title of whatever's happening on the stage. And maybe you do a short description of comedian Kirsten gives a show later on how funny she is. Click OK, and this is how it shows. So participants that are coming into the stage have a little bit of background information. Maybe you even put a time on this. So the main act at 
7 p.m. so that people know when they can expect something to be happening here. When someone comes on stage, they're no longer going to see this background. Similar to the breakout room, you can also change the background brightness. And if you don't like everything you've done, you can also just restore everything back to the default. Now, something you also notice about the bottom toolbar is you can use chats. So while other people can't see their avatars or videos, they can still communicate with one another. You can say hi, you could comment on what's being spoken. So, wow, Kirsten, you're so funny. Yay. <laughs> so you can post and you can still communicate with others that are in that chat area. You can also send emojis within the chat, but what's kind of cool is that when someone is speaking, you can send emojis that are going to float up while they are on stage. So this is also giving them instant feedback on how you are liking or disliking or em emojis you want to send. There's the default emojis down here, but you can also click the three dots to get a couple more emojis to share as well. Now let's talk a little bit about the participant side of things and, and hosts. So I mentioned before, as an admin, you can go on. Now I have cheated. I have another spatial chat window open for Neville, the dog. And I'm gonna put Neville, the dog, who is just a regular old participant, I'm gonna have him join the stage room. And you notice he does not have a go on stage option. He can chat, so he can say things to other people. He can also share emojis, but he has no option to go on stage. So what I might want to do as the admin, so I'm going to go back to the admin side of things, is I may want to promote Neville and make him a host so that he can join the stage. So I'm going to go to the people list and I can click on his name. It's easy because it's just us two, but what if you had hundreds of people in your space? You may actually want to use the search bar to search for Neville. I know Neville's going to be one of my speakers, so I'm just going to search for him directly so I don't have to look through all the different rooms to find him. So I can choose to promote to host, and you'll notice when I do that, he gets this little blue icon. So I'm going to go back to Neville's side of things, and now that he's a host, he can now go on stage. I am not Neville, so I'm going to hide my video because I feel like I'm an imposter. So when he goes on stage, he is just going to show his background, um, his avatar that he chose when he first logged in. Now one final thing about stages, so here I am back in my admin view. Here it is, this is Kirsten's, but Neville's on stage. I could go on stage with him, so I'll show that, this is Neville. And this is me. But here's the thing, is even though I'm an admin, even though I'm all powerful, you cannot kick anyone off of the stage. So even if I'm like, Neville, I kind of don't want you to be here right now, he either has to do it on his own or that's it. Like I can't push anyone off the stage. But what you can do, if you want to be a little nefarious, if you're like, he won't get off the stage, he's saying mean things, I need to kick him out, you can just kick him out of the entire space. So keep that in mind. You can't force anyone off the stage, but I could highlight his name on the participants panel or search for his name. And next to the two dots, one, I can demote him to a guest, or I can just straight up remove him. So I'm just going to remove user. Actually, I feel really bad doing that, but <laughs> sorry, Neville. So I'm just going to remove user. He's no longer in spatial chat. So he's gone. He's off the stage. So that's the only way to kick people out. So keep that in mind. Only promote people onto the stage if you actually want them on the stage. You can remove them, but by removing them from the entire spatial chat, you, there's no way to actually remove them just from the stage. So I'm going to go ahead and get off the stage again. And that's pretty much all you need to know about the stage. Again, if you want others to go on, you'll need to promote them as a host. And we'll talk more about host versus admin versus participants in a little bit. We have one more type of room, and that's what we'll explore next. So now that you've made a breakout room and a stage room, let's talk about the last room type, an audio room. So I'm going to click on add room and select audio room. 
I'm going to name it the very unique name, Audio Room. And I'm going to go ahead and move into it. Now you'll notice it actually looks very similar to a stage room. There's no avatar. There's no moving around. So let's just show you what it looks like first, and then we'll talk about customizing it. So when I click on Join, you'll notice it shows my avatar, but I have no option for showing my video. In an audio room, you can have up to 17 participants in kind of this audio stage. Everyone else in this room, and you can see it has a limit of 3,000 people, everyone else in this room can hear what's going on. Everyone else can send chats and send emojis to kind of interact with the speakers. Now, I will just go ahead and keep this up because hopefully this isn't too distracting. Similar to our stage room, you can add text. So this might be Kirsten's speech on speeches. And this will be, be a speech on how to give speeches while speaking. I'm going to click OK. Now, because something is currently going on, there's someone on stage, that text that you just passed on is not going to be visible unless it is completely empty on stage. So now you can see the title and see the description that you can change. You can also change the background by choosing an image from the gallery, uploading an image, or linking to an image. You can change the brightness of that background, and you can also revert back to the default settings if you just want to start over. Now, the way you get onto that audio sounding stage is a little bit different than on a regular stage room. So as an admin, you have the option to just click join. If you're a host, you're also going to have the button to click join. But let's go to Neville's spatial chat. So here I am as Neville. Neville is a basic participant, and I'm going to have him join the audio room. Now at the audio room, he can pass on emojis. He could write on the chat, but he can also raise his hand. When he raises his hand, he's essentially waiting to be called on so that he can join this audio discussion. If I jump back to my admin side of things, I now got a notification. I have a join request. It says, hey, Neville the dog would like permission to speak. He would like to be able to come onto stage. And I'm going to say, you know what? I would love to hear what Neville the dog has to say. So I'm going to accept it. Now on Neville's side, going back to his screen, he now has a join button. He can join, he can join. this audio stage. He is able to join this conversation. Now one last thing, sorry to go back and forth so much, is similar to a stage room, I can't kick him off the stage. Like I've given him the permission, I can't undo that permission. The only way to bump Neville off of this audio platform is to kick him out of the entire spatial chat. And again, to do that, just highlight over their name, click the three dots, and click remove user. And I'm not gonna do that. Neville heard what I was saying and he decided to leave and move off of that speaker on his own volition. So good boy, Neville, thanks for doing that. So here you can see that it's blank again. Now, one last thing, there's chats going on, whether it's a breakout room, a stage room, an audio room, there's chats going on in the background. And maybe an inappropriate message comes or you're using the spatial chat a lot and you kind of want to clear the messages. So you have a couple different ways you can clear these messages. If there's one particular message you just don't want there, you can highlight over the message. You could think it's lit and like send some emojis, but you can also highlight over it and then click on the delete button. This not only deletes it from your screen, but deletes it from everyone's screen. Let me go to another room that has a little bit more chats. We had more chats in our stage room. If I want to get rid of a lot of messages, next to the name room chat, I can click on the three dots and click on clear all messages from just this room, our stage room. Or if I just want a clean, hard reset of everything, I can select clear all messages from all rooms. It gives you a warning just to make sure that you want to do that. And if you do, it's going to clear it from 
everything. So this is a great way to kind of reset everything or at least get rid of any negativity or maybe pre-answers to a question or anything that you think needs to be cleared, you can clear it out of that chat. Now we've been talking a lot about admins versus hosts versus guests. So the last thing that we're gonna do is talk about all of those different permissions. So let's take a look at the different roles that might be within your space. So I'm gonna head over to the networking room. So I've got a couple of other individuals in here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my camera and I'll zoom in a little bit. So we've got Neville the dog and Sunshine the cat. Now currently both of them are just regular old guests and participants. I'm an admin, you can see I have a yellow shield right next to my name. You can see that here on my avatar and you can also see it on the participants list. But maybe Neville has earned the responsibility of being a host. So I'm gonna highlight over his name. I'm gonna click on the three dots. I'm gonna promote him to a host. And you'll notice, get a little bit closer to him, you'll notice that he has this blue badge indicating that he's a host, and we can see that in the participant list as well. And you notice Sunshine, she doesn't have any badge, she's just a regular old participant. Now, as the admin, that's you, that's the yellow badge, you can do everything. You can change everything, you can customize everything, you can do it all. And I'll show you that. So you have the customize button, you've got the menu button, you've got all these buttons below you, so you can do everything. Let's go over to Neville's side of things real quick. So here is from Neville's perspective. Now from Neville's perspective, he does not have the menu. He does not have the customize. So he can't do those things. So you may be wondering, so what can a host do? So as a host, maybe the cat is being really annoying and I wanna turn off their mic. Ah, they can't talk anymore or maybe I don't like their face anymore, I can turn off their camera. The host is also able to go up on stage. So I'm just gonna click onto these different rooms. So Neville can go to the stage room and he has the ability to go on stage. He can go to the audio room and he can join. He doesn't have to ask for permission. If there was any hidden rooms, so I'll go ahead and just hide a room real quick. I'll hide the student lounge. If a room is hidden, Neville can see that and he can join it. So as a host, they kind of have access to everything. So an admin may have restricted access, but hosts are able to circumvent those accesses. They're also able to remove users, so they can be really great at moder moderating different situations. So here I am back in my admin room. Now I'm gonna go as a guest. So here I am as Sunshine the cat, and Sunshine is a guest. <clears throat> so if Sunshine goes to the stage room, she does not have the button to join the stage. She can go to the audio room. She can raise her hand to ask to go on stage, but she doesn't have that option to do it right away. You notice she also cannot see the student lounge. If you have room permissions on, so I'm gonna go back as an admin. So let's say, She's currently um, in the audio room. I wanna change those room permissions so that they can't use the chat and they can't send reactions. They can just listen and that's it. So let me go from my point of view as an admin to Sunshine's point of view as a guest. You notice all the emojis are grayed out. She's not able to send one. She can click show chat, but you notice this chat is disabled in this room. If you're a host, like Neville is, I'm gonna have him go to the audio room. He can still send emojis. He can still send chats. So hosts essentially circumvent all the different permissions. Here I am as an admin again, hey there. The last role, and it's not particularly a role like within a space, but it's the space owner. Now that admin link, remember it's a super top secret link, but if you wanted to share it with someone, you can. But at the end of the day, there is a space owner. This is the person who entered in their email address. This is the account that the 
spatial chat space is linked to. If you change a password, it gets sent to the space owner. Um, if you are working with help and support at all, they're going to be using that email address. So the space owner isn't a particular role while you're within a space, but they are the point of contact for this space, even if you've been giving out that admin link to other people. So there you have it. You have just sat through a ton of information, but hopefully learned a lot. But maybe we didn't cover everything, or maybe you're running into issues. Maybe you need some troubleshooting. The Support Center is a really great resource where you can find lots of screenshots and how-tos to circumvent any problems that you're running into and to learn more about this program. So good luck, and we can't wait to hear all about how you're using Spatial Chat.